Why Humans Avoid War, Chapter 17, Guylon Point of View. Clinical death, a human phrase that refers to the absence of respiration and a heartbeat, what any normal species would simply call death. The human doctor in the flagship's medical wing told me I had no vital functions for a little over two minutes. This claim seemed impossible, given that I was very much alive. When I pressed him on how that was possible, he basically said they beat my corpse back to life. Though he dressed up the concept with scientific jargon, chest compressions, I believe was the term. If that was the turn idea of a joke, it wasn't very funny. That wound should have been mortal, but all known medical standards sorry, by all known medical standards. Waking up in a surreal, all-white room, strung out on whatever drug cocktails were in those IVs, my first thought had been that I was dead. I still wasn't fully convinced this wasn't the afterlife or some trick of the dying mind. What are you thinking about? It was Commander Ikov, seated on the bar stool next to me, dressed in civilian clothes. The flagship had stopped on Luna for maintenance following our little adventure, and I had obliged his offer to hit the local pub. You're going to stare a hole through the counter there. I tried to snap out of my thoughts, sighing. I'm thinking I need a drink. He chuckled, beckoning the bartender. That's the spirit. Two shots of vodka. Barkeep nodded, and she shuffled off to fill his request. I could feel a few stares directed at me, and I realized with a bit of discomfort that I was the only non-human in the establishment. I glanced up at the television screens on the wall, trying to distract myself. The sound was muted, but I could see closed captioning ticking across the picture. For Speaker Eula's resignation intensify, after internal memos discouraging, disparage, sorry. After internal memos disparaging various Federation representatives were leaked to the press, the source of this information is unclear. But she has, of course, accused the Turin Union. What exactly did she say? I asked, pointing to the screen. Sorry, I got the sniffles. Well, for one, she called the Arachter ambassador gutless, witless, and possibly brainless, and then proceeded to say she would hardly consider his species sentient. You can see how that might be offensive. Might be? I'd say her days as speaker are numbered. I gave the commander a pointed look, crossing my arms. I'm glad your brother's friends exposed her. Rykov stiffened, alarm flashing in his eyes. I don't know what... I'll stop you right there. Yes, you do. I growled. Do you think I'm stupid? We all thought the Hadal were just paranoid, but they were right when they said your diplomats were spies, weren't they? Between us, yes. But it's best not to talk about this. The agency doesn't have rules and it has ears everywhere. The human had lowered his voice to just above a whisper. I'd never seen him look this uncomfortable, which unnerved me as well. We need to talk anyways. Pavel wants me to ask you to keep quiet about how Kazil died. I told him we could trust you. There was an implicit question in his words, asking whether that trust was justified. His tone was almost pleading and his eyebrows were scrunched with concern. I suspected that worry was for my welfare rather than his own. If these spies would waltz into the middle of a standoff and murder a planetary ambassador in cold blood, I had no doubt they would ensure my silence one way or another. You can. My lips are sealed, I said. Next time, just give it to me straight, though. I don't appreciate the State Department BS. I know, General, and I'm sorry. I had to maintain his cover, but I never should have dragged you into that embassy mess to begin with. Wouldn't have missed it for the world. 
I wish I could have seen the look on their faces when the flagship showed up. The bartender returned, placing two tiny glasses of clear liquid in front of us. I squinted, inspecting the drinks with suspicious eyes. This was a rather small serving for an alcoholic beverage, but perhaps humans were more susceptible to alcohol's effects? After taking a single whiff of the drink, however, I recoiled in shock. It seemed that quite the opposite was true. Is this diluted at all? It smells like pure alcohol. You said you needed a drink. I figured you needed the good stuff, not just a beer. The commander downed the entire glass in a single gulp, then grinned at me. Your turn. I hesitated, but swallowed the drink as the human did. The strength of the brew left me coughing, my eyes steaming from its intensity. I clutched at my throat as I felt the vodka burning a trail down my gullet. The only thing that kept me from pitching out of my chair was Commander Rykov, who seemed unimpaired as he caught me. What is wrong with you people? I spluttered. It seemed that my struggle had caught the attention of the bar's occupants, and many of them were having a laugh at my expense. Seeing the good-natured mirth in the commander's eyes, I couldn't help but crack a smile. I shook my head, trying to clear the fuzzy feeling from my mind. I'm pretty sure that would be considered poison in the Federation. Rykov shrugged. The Federation is boring. One more? I'm good. Your loss. I pried the human's arms off of me, trying to rise to my feet. The lightheadedness wasn't exactly pleasant, so walking it off seemed like a good idea. I only staggered a few steps before lurching to the floor. Reaching for the counter was to no avail. All I achieved was cutting my hand against the its edge. I winced at the stinging sensation as it studied my palm. Pure shock rocketed through my veins as I saw the wound shrinking before my eyes, closing itself off as though by magic. The pain dulled into a gentle tingling, the injury site feeling uncomfortably warm. That was not normal. Maybe it was the vodka? No, that wasn't how alcohol worked. If only I could think straight right now. I stared at Commander Rykov, hoping he had some explanation. There is no way I would have believed such a thing if I hadn't seen it with my own three eyes. A chill shot down my spine as I realized the human looked more alarmed than surprised. What exactly had they done to save my life? Something told me I hadn't been given the whole truth. Again. What did you do? I sped. Look. It was my fault that you got shot. I had to fix it. I had to, he muttered. My anger was already giving way to confusion. I'm sorry, what? I don't blame you. I knew it, what I was getting into. Now I ask again, what did you do? We uh, injected you with experimental nanotechnology. I took a few ragged breaths, trying to process the information. Humans weaponized nanites, then turned around and used them for medicinal purposes? The whole thing sounded both illegal and dangerous. Since I would have been dead without the intervention, did I really have a right to complain? It didn't seem to have done any harm. In fact, a sample of my blood could be quite useful to the Jatari Confederacy. I inspected if the two remaining military species wanted to remain relevant. Sorry, I suspected if the two remaining military species wanted to remain relevant. We needed to play catch-up to Terran technology, or else the Federation might turn to Earth as its sole protector. Reverse engineering would speed up that process by decades. Right now, the Terran Union was a friend, and I hoped it would stay that way. But times and governments change, and being at the mercy of humanity's mood swings didn't seem like the best foreign policy decision. It was likely the Confederacy would try to step in as Earth's new trading partner. 
And after witnessing the implosion of the Xanic Republic, I knew we needed to take a more cautious approach. Not get too entangled or dependent. General, please talk to me. Commander's voice was pleading, almost desperate. I'll tell you whatever you want to know. I dusted myself off, rising on unsteady legs. I want to know what your thing is with nanites. He laughed, clapping me on the back. You're a piece of work. I smiled, but my mind was elsewhere. Perhaps it would be mutually beneficial if we brokered some sort of under-the-table deal. We could advance the humans' research, offer them a generous amount of credits, in exchange for arms and technology. Now that I've realized how fond the Turrens were of subtlety, I figured I just needed to get my government to join them in the shadows. I decided to broach the subject with the commanders later. With the commander later. When I was sober, and we were somewhere less public, with any luck, our friendship would lead to a long-lasting partnership between our species, as equals. That would be the end of chapter 17. Whether you liked it or not, please like, leave me a comment, and subscribe to the channel if you wouldn't mind. And if you have a full day ahead of you, I hope it goes well, and if you're going to bed soon, then I wish you the sweetest of dreams. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.